Hola, welcome to Spain, welcome to Monte Blanco, and we are here to ride Suzuki's new GSX 8R. Been very much looking forward to this. This middleweight sector is getting a bit spicy with bikes like the 8R, and uh, whether you like it or not, this is kind of the future, well, certainly the first the next few years of this sort of, dare I say, budget middleweight sector. Uh, the bikes that are designed to go track, road, commuting, whatever else, and yeah, so we've got a morning on the track here. Uh, we've got an afternoon on the road, so we get the full assessment. And uh, there they are. A fared version of the GSX 8S was never in doubt, but Suzuki hasn't simply chucked on a set of fairings to create the 8R. Aside from the obvious aesthetics, the main change is show a separate function big piston forks, whereas the 8S wears KYB kit. And then there's some rather orthopedic Vario type bars, which lends the 8R a slightly sportier cockpit. The same mid-range heavy 776cc parallel twin engine and its 270 degree crank remains unchanged over the 8S. At 8,899 pounds, it's bang on par with its rivals like the Daytona 660 and R7. Is this a potential super twin or just a super shopper? the sight and laps, fine grey black, really good brakes, what I say, surprising for its budget nature, but the chassis is so nice, so stable. So predictable. It's quite neutral, feels very, very planted but also to jack the rear up for the track and it's uh, quite nosy you can do what you want with it super super agile oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what a fucking what a toy this is ballsy this bloody corner without the chicane beforehand this is the first time we've tried this track without the chicane Oi. <laughs> no chance mate, no chance. Wind it in. It's just so predictable. I mean it's not it's not Larry, there's nothing overly exciting but you get your kicks just by going fast on the thing. I've got Greg Black behind me now, world endurance champion. <laughs> oh, you bastard, look at him. It, oh, he's got no ABS. I have. And he doesn't need burgers. <laughs> Oh, the peg's stuck in then. Oh, I've been cop blocked. My dad. 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 Come on Greg, let's have it! <laughs> yeah boy! Just got to watch the crank there is a little bit. Especially for here. Oh, ballsy bastard. <laughs> the smell of rubber. I wish you could do a scratch and sniff. Oh, go on, Gregor. <laughs> You know, people 
I'm moaning about being a parallel twin or not just another parallel twin and it's never gonna pull your foreskin off that's for sure Aside from the ground clearance, that's really the limiting factor here. The suspension's good, the brakes are good, the suspension doesn't feel cheap at all. Oh. Whoa, getting a bit squirrely. Shift is nice, blip is nice. Well, we've done. Oi. We've done nearly a tank in two sessions. Which is not surprising considering it's a 40 thing, I think. 40 day? 40. You just gotta keep feeding the gears. The sweet spot is sort of changing around 8, 9. It's easy to kind of get a bit rev hungry and red line chasey. But it doesn't need it. Just feed it, feed it the torque. I think if it was a tight track, you had decent rubber and decent ground clearance, you would not be out of place. In a fast scoop of a tractor on one of these. Easy. Easy. In A mode, which is the most aggressive, it's a little bit a bit spiky for a weedies, but that's my excuse anyway. Point number four, it's meant to be. I just asked for the hero blob to be removed because, uh, yeah, we're lacking a little bit of ground clearance, but apart from that, I mean, the forks, obviously that's different from the 8S. Forks are different from the 8S, and um, they definitely feel a bit beefier. It's stiffer. And you can tell the, the rear is jacked up a little bit. Uh, we'll get the figures at some point. Yeah, looking good. We've got no tolls left. We've got the ABS off now. Oh yeah, <laughs> the ABS is definitely off. I mean, obviously we don't condone uh, taking the ABS fuse out, but in the interest of testing and racing, uh, I will be conducting this test. <laughs> oh, that's so much better. It likes to back in this beauty. <laughs> oh, fuck ABS. Right in the curbs. Oh, beautiful. There's not a lot of change about this bike, honestly. Obviously I'd like a little bit more power, but it's not about that. Bit of ground clearance, beautiful. Oh, it's such an easy bike to ride. Fast as well. You get into a rhythm really easily. And yeah, it's so capable. I'm really, I'm, I'm not shocked, I'm pleasantly surprised. Did we get the slipstream? Oh, it's hard work with the camera. Come on, come on, come to Papa. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> that's wide, that's wide. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, fuck. It sort of goes you into sort of confidence inspiring heroics this bike. It's so easy to ride. But it's not gonna please everyone, like I said. It's not gonna be exciting for everyone. But it is very rewarding when you spank it. And uh yeah, we're we're not hanging about here tonight. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> Go on, Bobby! Oh, that's right! Here 
sure he's made it just <laughs> fucking hell fucking <laughs> oh majestic very very pleasantly surprised i mean look if you're expecting proper super sport levels of performance you just look elsewhere but with, a, with an exhaust a bit more power ground clearance you've got yourself a very very capable bike that will keep with super, super sports bikes uh, in the corner so you know it is a bit cheap look at it the cockpit is apart from the dash i like the dash but the general kind of ancillaries and yeah the hardware is just a little bit cheap now time for some road action <laughs> I was just giggling the whole way around <laughs> oh man dynamically there's very little to moan about aside from the ground clearance issues and super quiet exhaust note on the fly the engine mimics dot cotton after a pack of marble reds wheezing its way to the red line and ensures the last few thousand revs are fairly pointless on track don't let that deter you though the bulging mid-range is joyous to serve and falls you into thinking that you're on a bigger bike. I would have liked some adjustable suspension for the price, then again I'd also like a new GSXR. I'm sure with stickier rubber the need for suspension tweaks would become more apparent, but the chassis is more than up to the task. If you're expecting super sport levels of performance, look elsewhere. It's not a super sports bike. It, it's not far off it in the corners, but the power differential, differential is the big thing. Actually, chatting to Greg actually, he has got a GSX-8S with, with a full system on and a few little tweaks and it's making sort of 93 horsepower, which is not bad. He reckons with the ECU changes, it could be up to 100, 105 without touching the engine itself. So that's quite interesting to know. Um, but yeah, I think, after chatting with Make Me Easy a while back, a while ago, I think track days should be not novice, intermediate and advanced. I think track days should be sort of 400s, uh, these kind of twins, 100 horsepower, 600s, 1000s, etc. Then you don't, you eliminate that closing speed. And I think it'd be a lot safer personally, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, right, let's get, see if I can get my leathers back on after luncheon and um, go road riding. Let's go, fresh GoPro. Apparently this road is uh, sex. Clean the flies off you. Oi! Yeah, it's a little bit lively on the old uh, rebound. Do you hear that? That's the sweet sound of GoPro audio failing on one of the sexiest roads I've ridden. So here's a summary. The impressive chassis continued to impress on the road. We were embroiled in a proper dangerous riding contest and the 8R produced the minerals mile after mile. Stability isn't usually an exciting trait, but if it means you can ride like a twat and the bike beneath you responds, I'm all in. The only negative was the shock really, which lacks damping over high speed undulations. Back in the real world, the 8R is a cinch to ride at any speed and the motor really excels at legal speeds. It's super smooth, in fact the whole package is Mantakia and surfing that mid-range never gets tiresome. The additional wind protection over the AS is welcoming and coupled with the very accommodating ergonomics, longer stints in the saddle won't be an issue. It's hardly boner inducing, there's nothing inherently sexy about the AR, but Suzuki has built an extremely decent base package that brings sporting versatility to the masses. Suzuki wanted this bike to be a commuter, a track day bike and a sports tourer and that kind of gives you the vibe of this bike, it's a do it all sort of sit up and beg sports store really. What's interesting is the price. I mean, it is cheap. If you're looking for a super sport bike, then bikes like the CBR 600, which is just over 10 grand, and the ZX6R, which is again, 10, 10 and a half grand, just over 10 and a half grand. You know, it's not a lot more money really when you look at it, when you look at the spec and everything else. But when you look at its rivals, the Suzuki is right up there. Now we haven't done a good old fashioned uh, viewer Q and A in a while, so, there's lots of good questions on Facebook when I put the post out earlier, so I'm going to ask a few, uh, answer a few questions. Uh, the first one is from Carl Rabbi. Uh, if I buy one, will it make me more attractive to women? Well, Carl, I don't know. Um, I actually, I do know because I pulled an 80-year-old today. Uh, we're at a cafe and um, I gave this bird my number uh, and she wants to meet up tonight. So actually, 
As I was reading it out, I was like, well, how am I supposed to know? But actually, I do know. So, uh, yes, it will do. Christopher Ludvigsen, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It costs as much as an RS660 in Norway. Can it come close to an RS660 in any way? Spec, certainly not. Obviously, the Aprilia has more goodies and uh, the technology is a step up. But in terms of power and chassis, hand handling and chassis, there's not a lot in it. The Aprilia is more sporty. It's way more, or slightly more super sporty. So it can compete. And there will be nothing in it in lap times. When you put this bike on the race grid in the Sport Bike Cup or wherever national championship there is, in race trim, this will be right up there, I'm telling you. So yeah, uh, as a road bike though, not much in it, but the Aprilia uh, just has it. Jasper de Necht, uh, is it better than the R7 Yamaha? <sighs> Again, it's impossible to sort of quantify how much is, what is better and what you're looking for. Really, again, the R7 is sportier, but the, the engine is stronger, way stronger than the Yamaha. And again, when you've got a bit more ground clearance, which the Yamaha has, definitely, the miles better ground clearance. But as a road bike, this is a better road bike. By far, the engine's more usable, more, more punchy. The, the power's, there's a bit bigger spread of power. So, you know, again, it depends on what you're looking for, but on the track, the R7 probably will have it. On the road, I think the Suzuki has it by a mile. Uh, Richard Henderson says, will it be as fun to race as the SV650? It's a really good question because I think the SV, it's got no ride by wire. It's kind of, it's definitely an older bike and older bikes are inherently more fun, but this still has a fun factor when you're thrashing it and racing this still has a big fun factor so there's not a lot on it um they're both kind of fun in different ways that's the best way i put it kim jixa i can tell you're a, a bit of a jixa fan by your uh, by your name is it a proper gsxr or is it just a touring bike with a cool name i can't i think i've kind of answered that already but look this isn't a super sports bike this is not a gsxr it's not a gsxr by name it's a gsxs gsx gsx i can't even say it myself so Previous GSXs have been more sports Tory, and again, you know, here we are with the uh, the 8R. So, yeah, I kind of answered that already. Sean Mason says the MT07 was the perfect recipe and shouldn't be as much fun as it as it should be, or as it is, with only 75 horsepower. How does this compare? Is it the next entry level big bike Huna? Great looker. Um, again, just slightly off topic. The amount of people that say it's a brilliant looking bike and it's a bit definite split 50-50. It's a bit of a Marmite thing. The MT07, you're right. The MT07 is, the engine should not be as good or as fun as it is. And this is similar. It's got the sort of 270 uh, degree firing order um, with a parallel twin. It sounds very different. It feels very different. The Yamaha, they've got a much lighter crank in there. Uh, and this is a much heavier crank. So I guess it comes down to what flavor you want, really. The MT07 is a proper kind of motard sit up and beg. This is a bit more serious, a bit more sporty. Yeah, the MT07 engine is a bit more characterful, but again, not a lot on it. Uh, William Roberts, can you fist the intake? Well, no, no, you can't fist it. Can't fist it, William. Mark Newman asks, can it comfortably fit a six foot five human? I mean, look, what I will say is this is one of the bigger kind of middleweights sports bikes in the market. There's loads of room in the cockpit. There's loads of room both from the pegs to the seat and likewise from the seat to the uh, the bars. I would say, I mean, there's a couple of six foot four guys here and they haven't complained about it. So there's definitely more room. And the, in fact, the smaller guys are complained more than the bigger guys. So uh, in answer, to your, question, in answer to, to your question, yes, it does. Yeah. And just to finish up on, on this, uh, I think this is quite apt actually. This is a uh, less of a question, more of a statement. Uh, from Martin Goudillon. Uh, apologies if I've uh, pronounced that wrong. This is brilliant. Despite all the Facebook experts with big mouths and small penises, I bet it's a cracking little bike. It's a great motor, making loads of mid-range grunt. It's no GSX-R 750 and was never meant to be, but as a semi-comfortable road bike with useful grunt, I think it's very good. Won't sell many in the UK due to the vain outlook, but it'll do better in Europe. I mean, do you want a job, Martin? Because that was a bloody good roundup. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.